everyone. Welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we'll get an update from Thomas Crane Public Library Director Megan Allen about some expanded services they're offering. First, though, we check out weather and news for you. Currently in Quincy, partly sunny. It's 43 degrees. It'll climb into the low 50s this afternoon with the sun and clouds. Not as cold tonight as it has been. Lows will drop off into the mid 30s and not a bad weekend coming up either. Tomorrow we've got some rain moving in in the afternoon. The morning should be dry. Highs tomorrow right around 50 degrees or so. And I think Sunday is the pick of the weekend for sure. Sun and clouds look at highs on Sunday. Mid 50s, maybe even a little bit higher in some spots. The clouds return here on Monday. It'll get cooler with highs Monday only in the low 40s. Again, partly sunny and 43 in Quincy right now. In the news today, City of Quincy is now in the red category on the state's coronavirus risk assessment map. As of yesterday, Quincy went from yellow to red when the positivity rate climbed to 5.36%. There were 53 new cases of the virus confirmed in Quincy yesterday, bringing the active case total to 861. There have been 138 deaths. Mayor Thomas Koch and health officials are urging people to follow the guidelines of mask wearing, social distancing, and proper hand hygiene. A Quincy restaurant and bar has been ordered to close due to violations of the state's COVID-19 regulations. Board of License Commissioners this week voted to shut the Crack Irish Pub on Washington Street in Quincy Point after officials said they had evidence of multiple violations, including patrons not wearing masks or social distancing and an underage patron purchasing alcohol. The board's chairman, City Clerk Nicole Crispo, said this was the first time that the city closed a business due to the pandemic. I'm sorry for Stephen, I really am. But at the same time, I have to be, you know, aware of what's going on there. We have to keep our city safe. And that's what we intend to do first and foremost. An attorney for crack owner Stephen Kelly said that his client wanted to cooperate with the city. However, officials disagreed. The board had previously voted to suspend Kelly's license for three days. They delayed that action while Kelly appealed, but now the closure order is in effect until phase four of the state's reopening. The average residential property tax bill in Quincy will be rising by about $150 due to rising property values. City Council this week did approve the new tax rates for next year, which are actually lower than last year's rates, but due to rising values and revenue shortfalls caused by the pandemic, taxes are going up. Spokesman for Quincy Mayor Thomas Coe, Chris Walker, says the administration did everything possible to keep the tax increase as low as possible. For sure, we could drain all of stabilization. We could uh, do a lot of other things and get to that zero number. What we did was get as far as we could to zero. And by the way, I, I know I've said this before, and I know there's 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 there's, 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 I, there's at least a couple of sets of eyes that roll when we start comparing ourselves to, to other cities and towns. But I can tell you that virtually no city or town is before their city council right now making these kinds of adjustments adjustments for the explicit reason to reduce the tax levy. In every city or town across the Commonwealth, it's a formula. You figure out what the values are, you figure out the rate, you figure out what you're maximally allowed to collect under law, and that's what it is. And that's why we talk about what's going on in some of these other communities, is because we're making a very, very strong effort. Yes, we did not get to the stated goal, not a promise, a goal of getting to zero, but we got pretty far along that road. And I think what's before this body tonight is a pretty good faith effort to get us to get substantial $13 million of, of property tax relief off the books um, right there. It's not zero, but it's a lot better than where we would have been otherwise. And the city council agreed to tap the city's free cash and stabilization funds and to make $2.7 million in cuts to help offset what could have been a $500 increase in property taxes. Quincy is buying the former Beachcomber nightclub on Quincy Shore Drive and a three-acre vacant piece of land on Harriet Avenue in Montclair. 
The City Council this week did agree to use $5 million from the Community Preservation Fund to purchase both pieces of property to preserve as open space. The Beachcomber costs $2.25 million, the Harriet Avenue site $1.9 million. Money will also be used to demolish the beachcomber and create a passive park at that site. Mayor Thomas Koch had proposed the purchase of both properties to prevent any future development. A small ceremony was held at Mount Wollaston Cemetery in Quincy to mark the 79th anniversary of Pearl Harbor Day back on Monday. Quincy Veteran Services Director George Nicholson said that despite the pandemic, it's important to never forget the sacrifices of those who gave their lives for their country. When we talk about Quincy and what we do now in our involvement, let us not forget, and for any of the children who watched this thing on this ceremony on QATV. Think about the fact that Quincy's role in the Second World War was incredibly significant. The Quincy shipyard turned out such a volume of naval vessels, the likes of which production has never been seen anywhere. Up in North Quincy, we had the Naval Air Station where many Marine and Navy pilots and Army Air Force pilots got their first part of flight training all through the war. So we had a significant part to play and we did our part significantly during the Second World War so that we can all live the way we are now. Well, tomorrow is the deadline to donate non-perishable food items during the holiday food drive. The mayor has teamed up with Quincy Firefighters Local 792 to collect food donations at fire headquarters, also at the Squantum, Hasneck, Wollaston, and North Quincy Fire Stations. The food will be distributed to food pantries throughout Quincy. Tomorrow, also a holiday toy drive taking place. The mayor's collaborating with local labor councils to collect toys for children across the South Shore. Toys may be dropped off from 9 to 1. Tomorrow at Pageant Field, people are asked to wear masks and social distance during the toy drop-off. Coming up, we will check in with Thomas Crane Public Library Director Megan Allen. That's next. <music> Hey, Massachusetts, what do you want to get back to? Giving hugs, seeing my friends. Taking my wife dancing. I want to get back to taking my kids on play dates. I want to get back to Fenway. I want to get back to partying. We've worked hard, but we're not there yet. So we still need to wear a mask that covers your nose and mouth. Keep our distance at least six feet apart. And get tested. It's free and available. We can get back masks. Learn how at mass.gov slash get back. I believe that anybody can turn their life around. Um, they just got to want to, and they got to have some belief. Now more than ever, we need to do our part to prevent the spread of illnesses like the flu. Getting a flu shot will lower the chances of a serious illness and help keep you and your loved ones out of the hospital. Now's the time. Get your flu shot today. Hello, I'm Sandra Harris, president of AARP Massachusetts. It's the little things that can make a big difference in someone's life. Giving someone a genuine compliment, making a surprise phone call to a loved one, helping an isolated neighbor get groceries. During the pandemic and beyond, it's important that we come together as a community to care for one another and to connect in these small, but powerful ways. Visit aarp.org slash reachoutma for ideas on how you can brighten someone's day. Join us.
us on Saturday, December 19th for National Wreaths Across America Day. To find a location in your community, go to wreathsacrossamerica.org. Checking back in with the director of the Thomas Crane Public Library, Megan Allen, for an update on how they're coping during this challenging time. Hey, Megan, nice to see you. <laughs> Hi, Joe. It's great to see you again. Or should I say virtually see you again? <laughs> virtually see you again. It's like you're, 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 you're in the building, right? You're just like a couple of walls away, so um, safely distant. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's how we're all doing it. We're grateful to have this opportunity, at least, uh, to be able to talk and uh, get information out uh, to the community. And uh, as I always say, hopefully in one day in person again, for sure. Yes, yes, that, that, will, that will happen. We yeah. just don't know when. How uh, have things been going at the, at the main branch uh, so far? And I know we're going to talk about uh, some expansion of services, but uh, give us a little update if you could. Yes, uh, things have been going well. Um, we have our uh, very smooth running um, TCPL to go service go happening at the main library. And we've been doing that since June. So um, we're operating uh, six days a week, uh, Monday through Saturday and providing uh, outside contact free pickup service at the Washington Street entrance of the main library. And that's very popular. Um, a lot of people are coming in and, and picking up materials. Uh, we've tried to provide people with many different ways to request items so people can go in and place holds in the catalog or they can call us on the phone and get help. But we also have a form online that people can fill out. And, and sometimes it's harder for parents with different age kids reading at different levels and, you know, so we can help people um, with books that, will interest their kids. Um, so that's happening. Um, and since September, we've been providing some limited in-person technology services at the main library. So up on the top floor, so um, people can make one hour appointments to come in and use a computer. And we're also providing print, copy, scan, and fax services, uh, again, by appointment. Um, and people who don't wanna come in, but they need to print something out, we can print out for them and they can pick it up outside through our to-go service. So um, all those services are being very well used. Um, so we're definitely seeing a need for them. Um, and then our new services that we just launched last week um, are at the Adam Shore branch and the Wallison branch. We really felt that we needed to provide some options out in the neighborhoods for people to pick up materials because not everybody can easily get to the main library to pick things up. Um, and I'm sure many people are still nervous about using getting on a bus or a subway to come to the main library, might not have a car. So at the Wallison branch, we are providing the same kind of to go pickup that we provide at the main library. So it's in the vestibule, you don't go into the building. So it's very safe in that way. Um, and at the Adam Shore branch, because they have a nice sized lobby, we decided to experiment with a little bit more service there. So we're calling it TCPL Express. Um, so you can, you can pick up your holds there, uh, but you have to come, go into the lobby to pick them up. And we have a self-service checkout machine that you don't have to touch, you just need your library card. And we have some materials on display that you can browse. So print books, live print books, kids books, DVDs, magazines, uh, sort of new and popular interest materials. So if you're really missing the browsing experience, um, you can stop by the Adam Shore lobby. Um, we are limiting it to one person or family at a time in the lobby. Um, so it's all, you know, set up so that you have limited contact with, with anybody else. Um, so people sl are slowly starting to discover those services and, um, we, we're sure they're going to pick up speed as, as people find out that they can, um, go to a branch. So, but yeah, just to be clear, there's still no, um, in person, uh, browsing within the, the, the aisles, if you will, at the branches, right? Uh, only in the lobby at Adam Shore. So yes, no, there's no going into the main reading room and just browsing the stacks either at the branches or the main library. 
Okay. What about um, daily publications, Megan, magazines, newspapers? Are those accessible also? Well, people, the newspapers, not, uh, because the newspapers, you know, you would have to come into the building and sit and read them. Um, we, we have some online newspapers, like people can access the New York Times online, the Globe, um, but, you know, you need to be able to have internet access to, to access them. Uh, magazines, people can borrow magazines. Um, and the magazines that we used to, there were certain popular magazines that the current issue we used to limit to, you could only read it in the building. And now we let everything be borrowed because nobody can come in the building to read them. So um, yeah, so if you're missing your regular print magazines, you can place holds on those. And if you can't figure out how to do it, you can call us and we'll We'll, um, we'll do it for you. Okay. And what's the uh, return uh, policy uh, look like right now? You mean in terms of loan periods? Right. Well, we have pretty generous loan periods as it is. And then we have a pretty generous renewal policy. Um, and we have it set up now so that your items will automatically renew unless somebody else has placed a hold to wait for it. Oh, okay. Uh, or, um, you know, you've already renewed it as many times as we allow. So um, people don't have to worry too much about how long they keep things. I mean, obviously, when you're done, it would be good to return them so someone else has a crack. But um, And we stopped charging overdue fines as of July 1st. So even if you are a little late, you missed the due date, um, there won't be an overdue charge. And all of our outside return Drops are open at every location. Um, so if you have material to return, you know, even if you if you slept to the main library to pick them up, but then you're done and you want to return them and Wollaston is closer, you can just put them in the in the bin at Wollaston. Okay, good to know. And um, what's the situation at North Quincy? Well, it's kind of turning into a saga. Um, a lot of work has been done on the renovation there. Um, there's a new roof. Um, they've done a fair amount of interior work. They've added insulation. It's gonna be a, a, a much more comfortable branch when it does finally reopen. Um, but we've been in a holding pattern for a while now. Um, all of the windows need to be replaced and they're not, you know, like you can't just go to Home Depot and buy windows. Uh, they had to be custom built to fit those openings. So they're, they're waiting for those windows to be manufactured and delivered and installed to then finish the rest of the interior work. So um, we're just waiting for that now. So the other work is paused. They've done everything they can do. So um, I don't have a timeline. I'm hoping that in the spring maybe we'll be ready to provide some services out of the North Quincy branch because we know people really miss it. And it's the, the branch that's the farthest away from the main library too. So it serves the whole other end of the city. So we're anxious to provide services out of the branch, but just don't know when yet. Yeah, everything is on pandemic time uh, these days. Unfortunately. Absolutely, there's delays at factories. They're, de you know, they're just, yeah, there are delays. Yeah, can uh, folks drop off materials at North Quincy? Yes, there's a, there's a re outside return drop on the Hancock Street side of the building right by the entrance. So yes, and that we're still checking that every day uh, and emptying things and bringing them up to the main library, so yeah. We should talk about, I, I know you're doing so many, um, keeping up with your virtual programs, um, you know, just really um, a full schedule of activities folks can enjoy online. Yes, there are many, many programs and the children's programs are very active and the children's librarians have been very creative <laughs> and inventive in, in creating programs for the online environment. And, you know, the nice thing is you don't have to worry about it being too crowded. Um, nobody has to register for program. Uh, you can just tune in if you want to watch it live. And if you can't make it live, a lot of our programs are recorded and then they're available on our YouTube channel. So if it doesn't fit with your schedule, you can tune in later. Um, the adult programs, Clayton Cheever, the assistant, has been doing a great top job um, putting together a variety of adult programs. And 
you know, we're finding that we're getting very healthy attendance and often uh, attendance that we couldn't accommodate in the building. You know, our, our, uh, there was a program last night about uh, Irish Christmas traditions, I believe. And, uh, you know, our meeting room capacity at full of adults is 125. And I think we had 200 people watching the program last night and, and that, w that won't count the people who tune in later and watch the recording. So we're actually able to reach more people. Um, yes, it is. It's definitely one of the silver linings of this whole situation is, uh, is the access provided, you know, you have the technology to do it, of course. Exactly. And of course, you know, we had a big learning curve in the spring and a lot of scrambling to figure out how to do it and do it well. But, um, you know, I have to just give credit to the library staff. They've just been amazing. So, um, and we're really trying to keep people feeling connected to the library and to the community during this time because it's, you know, it's, it's, it seems kind of endless at this point, but we know there will be an end. And even, you know, as we think about the end, you know, what the new normal might be, you know, this experience of being able to reach people who could not come into the building for programs um, will definitely affect how we do in-person programming in the future. And, you know, we'll, we'll probably try to figure out ways we can live stream our in-person programs so that people who, who can't come to the building can still take advantage. So that will be another challenge. But yeah, I think, you know, that's something that we're all learning uh, as we go, including the way we're doing this interview right now. Like you mentioned, we're, we're just, you know, several feet apart physically, um, but, uh, but doing it virtually. So it is a, it's, a, it's a different form of outreach, for sure. Uh, is, it, is it comparable to what your colleagues are doing in other communities, would you say? Well, I think every library has really, you know, gone online with their programming. I'm sure some libraries do more of it than others, depending on, you know, what their staff mm. abilities are and, you know, what technology they have access to. We did apply for a small um, CARES Act grant from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners in the summer. Uh, and we, the money was specifically to support online educational programming. So we used some of it to purchase some additional equipment for staff, like microphones and ring lights and things that would make the the delivery of the programs a little bit easier for staff and and also you know just look better right yeah so um you know if you're if you're doing a story time you have to have your hands free so um yeah, yeah you need a headset perhaps or exactly. uh, you know a better camera so folks can see you yeah exactly yeah exactly so we've invested in some of that technology and um, and the staff have just really learned a lot. So yeah, have you been able to uh, keep all your staff on during this time? Yes, I mean the city has not had any layoffs or furloughs. Um, there is a hiring freeze. I have a couple of uh, spots open, but you know we're we're managing. Um, sure. What have you not been able to do, Megan? What do you what do you miss most? I guess other than having in person contact with your with your guests. <laughs> Well, I think the in-person contact is, you know, is what we're all missing. Um, you know, it really is, you know, the, the library is a physical place where people come to gather. It was a big part of, of the experience for both the staff and our, our visitors. So not being able to have people here and interact with them and meet their needs directly is challenging. Um, and having to do everything by phone. I mean, we have added, I mean, we've always helped people by phone and email in the past. We added chat and text services uh, after the pandemic started so that we've increased the ways people can reach out to us and, and get assistance. So, and my staff is, is really busy all of our business hours responding to people's inquiries. So yeah. we're basically here to help people with any questions that they might have uh, doesn't have to be about a library book. Um, so, have you I found heard, that are borrowing more um, uh, movies, uh, uh, podcasts, you know, things, uh, digital things to, to take up their time? Well, certainly we have uh, uh, many, many digital resources for people. You know, we have books and audio books and movies and TV shows, just, and we've added additional services. Like, we just added this um, new kids book 
service. It's a digital service called Tumble Books mm. for kids. And um, it, there's also a Tumble Math, which it's stories, but they're around math concepts. So they're sort of a fun way to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we added a new language learning um, online language learning service in the summer. Um, so we're, we're adding more things so that people have more things to pick from when they go online. And, you know, I, I, it can be challenging to figure out how to access some of these services that the library provides for free. And we also provide help with that. So if people want to try to figure out how to do it and they can't, call us and we'll help. Good, yeah, what is a good phone number uh, we should let folks know about? Well, our main number, 617-376-1300, and you'll have choices whether you want to talk to people in the children's room, whether you want to um, talk to people about um, requesting materials, or whether you want information about computer services. But basically, if you call that number, you can get through to a human being, but we'll figure out you know, who can help you best. Uh, I think people, you know, they may not realize that so they think they have to pay for Netflix or, um, you know, um, one of those services to get online movies. But if you have a library card, you know, you can watch movies for free with your library card, uh, you know, through Canopy and Hoopla, which are two mm -hmm. services that we provide. So, um Yep, and you can get your library card online too, right? You can get your library card online too, and yes, so we, we've really, you know, we're trying to make it as easy as we can to access all of those resources. Sure. As a curious, has um, Mary Diggle's program, the literacy program, been able to keep going during this time? Yes, both our literacy tutoring and our English language conversation programs have continued virtually. It's been very challenging. I mean, uh, many of the, the residents who use those services have low technology skills or little access to technology. And um, so there's been a big learning curve for the people who participate in those, but um, they're still going on and they figured out how to move them online. So we have English language conversation groups happening online now instead of in person, how mm -hmm. they used to happen at the library. Mm -hmm. And we have literacy tutors and student pairs working online uh, instead of in the building. So um, there've been a lot of ways that the staff has adapted um, and tried to support uh, the people using the programs. Yeah, kudos for them because that I can see is being extremely challenging. That's really where you need, uh, you know, body language communication, eye to eye contact. Yes. So yeah, good for them. Yes. Uh, anything else we should touch on right now? Do you think, Megan? Um. Again, the big news is uh, uh, curbside service at Wollaston and Adam Shore, right? Yes, curbside service at Wollaston and lobby service at Adam Shore. And people should, um, if they go to our website, um, thomasgreenlibrary.org, we have kind of a summary right on the homepage of all the services that we're providing at each location. You can just click on the one and you're interested in to find out more. Very easy. Um, and, you know, in terms of just our health and safety protocols, we're just following the protocols very strictly uh, our staff and you know we require it of um, anyone using our services as well so whether you're coming in for outside pickup or you're coming in to use a computer for an hour session you know everybody has to be masked and we keep socially distant and our staff are working apart inside the building um, and we're we have hand sanitizer for everyone and disinfectant and you know so all of those protocols we've been following since we came back into the building in June and so far so good my staff has stayed healthy and um, so I think the protocols are, are working. Good um, I know they're sanitizing buildings frequently they've gone over all the HVAC systems throughout the city. Tweaked. Yes we've uh, uh, tweaked our ventilation at all of our lo locations where people are working and um, Yes, we have the, uh, the city uh, provided us with these disinfectant Mr. Guns, which you've probably seen those, uh, that make it easier for us to disinfect 
you know, railings and doorknobs and things like that really quickly. Um, so we have lots of new routines that we're following. Sure. Um, in terms of the future, you know, we'll see. I think we're at, we may be at the beginning of a long COVID winter, and it's hard to see into the future very far. Um, but I do expect that, you know, even if the numbers in Quincy rise and become, you know, if Quincy becomes a red community, for example, um, there's a possibility we might have to pull back on the in-person services, but we would continue to be able to provide the outside pickup um, and maintain it at all of our locations so that people will have options. And I think we can continue to provide that really quite safely for people. And of course, all the online services, you know, will be full speed ahead on all of those for the foreseeable future. Sure. Um, again, thomascranelibrary.org or 617-376-1300. Yes. And if you go to thomascranelibrary.org, it also has our text number and our chat number. Our text number and our chat, you know, box, if you will. The chat box, yeah. right. The only other thing I'd just like to mention is that we are taking advantage of being in the building without, without visitors to, um, we had um, finalized a new space plan uh, about a year and a half ago um, that was um, sort of looking at how we can reorganize our space at the main library to better serve the public. Um, and some of that involves some major collection shifting. Hmm. So when we do reopen generally and people are able to come back into the building, um, everything's going to be in a different place. Oh, no, it's like you're in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a big project and we're sort of gradually working on that. Yeah, it would be like if you went into a big super stop and shop and suddenly the dairy is not over here, it's over here. And the, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. it's something to look forward to because you can explore it anew again. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's the, in, the intention is to make it easier for people to find the things that they want to find the most, um, easier for people to browse um, popular materials and make, uh, you know, um, we're, we're relocating our teen space to an area that we think will be a better spot for them and give them a little more space and so uh, we have a variety of goals that we're, we're reaching for with this um, space reorganization. So um, we're, we're kind of excited about it. So that's, that's another little upside of having to be closed that we're able to make that happen. Yeah, to, to you know, keep moving forward, as you say, keep productive and utilize the time um, in, its, in its most effective way. Right. Is yeah. the, uh, we should probably point out, is the bookstore open at all, Megan, or no? The bookstore is not open. Okay. Um, and we are not able to accept donations right now. We just don't, you know, our, our friends at the library are, are all volunteers. Yes. Um, and, you know, we aren't allowing any volunteers in the building at this point, only staff, uh, just for everybody's safety. Sure. So uh, we can't really handle donations. Um, okay. Yeah. I just want to point that out in case folks are warned. I've had a couple of questions about it. I, I, I figured that was the case. Yeah, I mean, it, it may be in the spring. Uh, I mean, I've seen some other libraries, friends groups try doing some like outside sales in the summer. Mm. So I, I don't know whether our friends group will 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 consider anything like that when the weather starts getting better again. Um, if we still can't just open the bookstore, but you know, we'll see. They right. certainly have lots of good stuff in there. So yeah, yeah, it's too bad too because it's a great place to uh, holiday shop. <laughs> It is. You're correct. So something else to look forward to <laughs> <laughs> in the new, in the new year. <laughs> yeah. Anything else, Megan? I, I think that's it. I really okay. appreciate the opportunity to just update people on what's going on and, and encourage people to come visit us either online or, you know, picking up materials or call us on the phone. We'd love to chat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, uh, uh, thomascranelibrary.org or three seven six one three zero zero. Great to see you, Megan.
Thank you and happy holidays. Thank you. Same to you and, and uh, your family and staff. Yes. Stay healthy. Recapping the forecast for you for the rest of the day today, a mix of sun and clouds and a pretty mild temperatures this afternoon into the lower 50s. The clouds uh, return tonight down to the uh, mid 30s should stay above freezing tonight, though that means the precipitation tomorrow will be rain, mostly in the afternoon with the highs in the mid 40s. A better day on Sunday, sun and clouds nice and warm, mid maybe upper 50s here on Sunday. The clouds return on Monday, so do the cooler temperatures with a high barely 41 degrees here on Monday. Thanks again going out to Megan Allen for joining us today. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. On Monday, we'll chat with representatives from Neighbor Works and Work Inc. And a reminder, don't forget, participate in the Quincy COVID Memories Project. You can share your experiences of life in Quincy during the pandemic by going to quincyculturalmemory.com or by sending your submissions to the Thomas Crane Library Attention Local History at 40 Washington Street, Quincy, 02169. And don't forget, too, to visit our website. Go to qatv.org. You'll find our latest programs, news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and now Christmas parades from years past, plus classic and fall sports. For all of us here at Quincy Access Television, I'm Joe Catalano. Please stay safe.